is in this order. We have the acting head of department, head of departments, professors, directors, deans, registrar, deputy vice chancellor, vice chancellor, and chancellor. We have the HOD, Social, Sociology Department, we have the HOD, AIE, we have the HOD of Computer Science, we have the HOD, Physics, the HOD of Petroleum, we have the HOD of Biological Sciences, the HOD of Architecture, the HOD of AIE, we have the HOD of Political Science, we have the HOD of Sociology. We have our professors, We also have our directors, we have our director, director of EDS, we have our director who create, we have Our deans, deans of College of Business and Social Science, College of Leadership Development, College of Engineering, and CST. We have the registrar, we have the deputy vice chancellor. We have the vice chancellor in the procession. We have the chancellor. Thank you very much. While we remain standing, I want to invite the Covenant University chaplain. Pastor Coyote Martins for the opening prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we ask and we commit every program today into your hands that you take charge and preeminence, direct in every affairs of this program. And Lord, we ask, O oh God, that at the end, it shall be to the glory and praise of your name. To everyone who has gathered here from every nooks and crannies, we ask, O oh God, affect your good end upon every individual in Jesus' name. And on this inaugural lecture, both for the speaker and those of us, the hearer, Father, we ask, O oh God, that this day will indeed be a day of blessing and of your help in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Let me hear a resounding amen. 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 Peace. Thank you very much, sir. While we still remain standing, we want to take the national and see you anthem, the band.
Thank you very much. We may please be seated. We want to establish the protocol for this 17th inaugural lecture. The Chancellor, sir. The Chancellor and the Chairman Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedepo, esteemed member of the Board of Regents, present. The Vice Chancellor, Professor AAA Atairo. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akam Williams. The Acting Registrar, Dr. Larry Amodu. Other Principal Officers of the University, Deans of Colleges and School of Postgraduate Studies, members of the University Senate, the lecturer, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, kings and queens in Hebron, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. To take us further, I want to invite the acting registrar to introduce the key officers of Covenant University. Join me as we receive Dr. Larry Amodu. The Chancellor of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo, the Vice Chancellor, Permit me to stand on existing protocols. It is my pleasure today to introduce to you the key officials of Covenant University. I'd like to invite and recognize the Dean of Students, Professor Ambrose Azeta. Please let's receive him with hand clap. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce the Chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Coyote Martins. You're welcome, sir. I'd like to welcome the director of CLR, that is our own center of learning resources. Please let's receive her. Dr. Promise Ilo, you're welcome. And we have the director of financial services, Mr. Paul Uwaji, you're welcome. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to recognize the dean of College of Engineering, Professor Omoli, you're welcome. Seated next to him, I have the Dean of College of Science and Technology, Professor Ajanoku. You're welcome. I have the Dean of College of Business and Social Sciences. You're welcome, sir. That's Professor Alege. Then I have the Dean of College of Leadership Development Studies, Professor Innocent Chilua. You're welcome. And we have the Dean of School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Adibayo. You're welcome, sir. We have our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akam Williams. You're welcome, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, we have our own Vice Chancellor, Professor AAA Atayero. You're welcome, sir. On behalf of the management of Covenant University, I would like to welcome you to this event. Thank you very much. Be blessed. Let's give our acting registrar another round of applause. But because further now I want to invite to the podium this afternoon, and I want us to do it while rising as we receive our Vice Chancellor for the welcome remarks. Let's rise as we receive our Vice Chancellor. Let's put our hands together as we receive our Vice Chancellor, Professor A.A.A. Atairo. You may please be seated. I recognize today the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents Covenant University, our own dear 
Dr. David O. Oyedepo, the esteemed members of the Board of Regents of Covenant University, every invited guest here seated, kings and queens in Hebrew, principal officers of Covenant University and members of Senate of Covenant, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is with utmost pleasure that I welcome you to this inaugural lecture. Today's lecture, titled, Efficient Data Exchange in Communication Networks, Big Data and Security in the Emerging Smart World, is the 17th in the series of inaugural lectures of Covenant University and the second in this academic session. It is a open secret globally that universities are considered citadels where solutions to societal problems emanate to help improve the quality of life. Universities help to steer the way to the future by creating new knowledge and disseminating novel ideas. A university that fails to lead in these aforementioned ways becomes irrelevant and falls short of its service to the society and to individuals. This understanding is at the root of the formation of covenant's vision our covenant mission, and most especially our covenant core values. These threefold core has distinguished us as an institution of global repute. Lectures of this nature provide universities and our professorate a unique platform to disseminate development-oriented knowledge arising from the research endeavors they embark on. And by so doing, it helps the professorate to fulfill a core obligation to the society. We all know that the world is fast becoming a data road world enabled by computers and the internet. The development and application of the high CTs is playing a decisive role in this transformation. The expansion of big data and development of the Internet of Things are increasingly being visible in a smart world. This is affecting the efficient and effective utilization of the health resources. IOTs enable interconnectivity of intelligent and self-configuring embedded devices and sensors in a dynamic and global network infrastructure. And this enables scalability, flexibility, agility, and ubiquity in fields of massive scale multimedia data processing, storage, access, and communications. However, there is a need to improve the effectiveness of computer networks and management of data transmission as sustainable development efforts continue to depend on data management, further to the need to monitor, analyze, and act on big data. There are issues like data confidentiality, data verification, authorization, mining, secure communication, and computation all these have come to the fore. We all witnessed recently that the Facebook was hacked again and uh, as if to rub in the salt on the injury, the account of the founder of Facebook himself, Zuckerberg, was hacked. So security becomes an issue. So it is on this note I welcome you to this very, very germane and very contemporary and thought-provoking lecture. 
which addresses some of the concerns in the efficient management of networks relating to data mining, network utilization, and storage. But this 17th inaugural lecture, let me conclude on this note, is very dear to my heart for one singular reason. The lecturer of today, Professor John Undueso, and my humble self, some decades ago, were privileged to leave the shores of this country on a plane to a no man's land where we did not even understand the language they speak there. 50 of us were on that flight as special Federal Republic of Nigeria scholarship students under the Bureau of External Aid. And that was how we landed in Moscow, Russia. And what a joy that some years later, as destiny will have it, we found ourselves together again in the best university in West Africa, Covenant University. So I have no doubt in my mind, I know the pedigree of the lecturer of the day is about to reel out to you some things in communication networks that you have not heard before. So please feel relaxed, sit back, students take notes as we listen to the lecturer of the day. Thank you. Let's give the Vice Chancellor another round of applause. Thank you. Well, we are the climax of this inaugural lecture now. To properly situate and introduce to us the lecturer of the day, I want to call upon Professor Ulujide Adekeye for the citation of the lecturer. Chancellor, sir. I stand on already established protocols. This is a citation of the lecturer for the 17th inaugural lecture of Covenant University, Professor Samuel Nduezo John. Sir, so may I humbly request that you rise and maintain that position while I read through your citation. Thank you. Samuel Nduezo John was born on the 13th of April, 1967, at Nung Ukim, Akwaibom State. Samuel John is a professor of computer science, systems, and network engineering in the Department of Electrical and Information Engineering, College of Engineering, Covenant University. He's been a teacher for the past 22 years. Professor John had his primary education in Ogun State and began his secondary school education at Abusi Olodumare Academy, Ijebu Igbo and later completed these at Sari Igomu Secondary School, Orile Igomu, Lagos. He proceeded to obtain his higher school certificate at Ansarudin College in Solo, Lagos. But before he obtained his HSC, Professor John got a federal government scholarship through the Bureau for External Aid, Federal Ministry of Education, for higher education studies in the Soviet Union, now Commonwealth of Independent States, from 1988 through to 1994. There he obtained his BSc, MSc, and PhD degrees in computer systems and network engineering, specializing in computer science, computing machines, complex systems and network from Donetsk National Technical University. Professor John is a hardworking professional and an enthusiastic computer systems and network engineer with a vast knowledge of computing and has applied these in the pursuance of a wide range of indigenous ICT convergence, data efficiency management, cyber security, cyber crime, and telemedicine solutions, publications. Professor John has more than 90 publications to his credit, and these include journal articles, edited conference proceedings, and books published in the US, Russia, Ukraine, and our beloved country, Nigeria. His research interests 
includes computer security, computational intelligence, computational science, and network engineering, amongst others. Some of the positions held. Professor John has achieved enviable administrative and leadership prowess. He served as academic level advisor, Department of Electrical and Information Engineering, head of department of the same department, dean, College of Engineering, chairman, College Research and Postgraduate Committee, the chair, University ICT Committee, the chair, College Curriculum Committee, and the coordinator, Departmental Postgraduate Program. <clears throat> Chancellor Sir, Professor John is a resource person to the National Universities Commission, NUC, and the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Korean. Professor John collaborates actively with the industry in the area of computer engineering. He is heavily involved in industrial research and consulting roles as a member of the Trans-African Hydrological and Meteorological Observatory, TAMO, the Netherlands. He has some research grants to his benefit. He is a beneficiary of a plethora of research grants, amongst which are the Nigerian Communications Commission grant for research on implementation of software-based nomadic-based station. Was also given a research grant in collaboration with Ambrose Ali University Ekuma through the Education Trust Fund, ETF, now TED Fund, to develop TCP over IP and communications laboratories for Nigerian universities. Peer recognition. Chancellor Sir, the lecturer of today is a visiting professor to the University of Maduguri, Borono State, is a visiting lecturer to the University of Lagos, and is the external examiner to the Department of Computer Science, Northwest University, Mafikeng Campus, South Africa, and other Nigerian universities. Commendation. While serving in Ibadan, your state, Professor John received the Certificate of Commendation from the National Youth Service Corp and a Certificate of Merit and Honor from the Ibadan North Coppers Association. This was in 1997. Membership of Professional Associations. Professor John is a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the prestigious Institution of Engineering and Technology, IAT United Kingdom, and the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Korean. Professor John is also a member of the Covenant University Senate. Our dear lecturer of today is married to Olga Leonidovna John, and they are blessed with a beautiful daughter, Lucy Samuel John. Ladies and gentlemen, faculty, staff, and students, please join me as I invite the lecturer of the 17th inaugural lecture of Covenant University, Professor Samuel Undwezo John. Please rise and put your hands together as we welcome the lecturer of today. May you all be seated, please. <coughs> the Chancellor Sun. and Chair, Board of Regents, Convenant University, Dr. David Oedipo, the Vice-Chancellor, Professor A. A. Atairo, the Principal Officers of Convenant University, member of my nuclear and extended family, distinguished invited guests and friends, Gentlemen of the press and media, electronic media, the kings and queens in Hebron, ladies and gentlemen. The Chancellor Sir in absentia, it is with great pleasure, privilege, and honor that I stand to give this lecture the first for the Department of Electrical and, Engineering, Electrical and Information Engineering Department. In fact, I'm very, very pleased to be the pioneer 
been the first uh, lecturer for that department. Marking my inauguration as a professor of computer system and network engineering in College of Engineering of this great and unique university, Covenant University. Let me borrow a leaf from the great inspirational author, Orison Sweet Madden. I quote, our thoughts and imagination are the only real limit to our possibilities. When I was growing up, computer technology was just coming up. Films and documentaries were shown indicating that computers would rule the world. That was how my interest in computer originated. My journey in the study of computer system and network engineering started at Donetsk Polytechnic Institute, later renamed Donetsk National Technical University, Ukraine, where I succeeded successfully defended my thesis on increasing the efficiency of data exchange in computer networks based on a protocol of transmission control protocol over internet protocol. This was widely aired on local state television and helped to showcase my university on a new pedestal of the emerging smart world of efficient data management through these research findings and result obtained from my research work. On this platform, I stand to justify and bring useful information on what has been achieved so far in the area of efficient data exchange in computer networks and what impact this has contributed to our society and the world at large. I hereby introduce this topic of today, efficient data exchange in computer networks big data and security in the emerging smart world. I'm quite sure that all of us sitting here now are with one devices or the other, doing one operation, whatever, be it WhatsApp, be it uh, Facebook, be what have you. These are what we are here to see some of the impact of these things that are now in the tip of our hands, how it goes. When I started in Donetsk National Technical University, in 1990, Professor Bashkov, now the pro-rector on the academic, called us that by 5 p.m. today, on that day, that there will be a communication between our university and the university in the United States of America. At that time, surprisingly, it was very difficult. Other times it was the phones, it was easy to do that. But to, be, to, to do a direct transmi uh, transmission of mails in and out wasn't as much except telegram at that time. So we just start, we stand, watch, immediately we don't hear thinking, and then the mail came, and then we all were like Eruka rejoices and uh, celebrating. One thing that I noticed at that time, today we only have ability to see the front end because I'm also a little of forensic. But the back end were what we were watching at that time then, which is where the procedures of this transmission takes place and now it happens. And it was really interest, that was where my interest in this area comes to be. Computer network play an important and ever increasing role in the modern smart world that have extended the reach of network connectivity to places that either to many years ago would have been unthinkable. I think you can bear me witness on that. Development of modern computer networks and realization of their programs, hardware system result in a sharp increase of workload and complication of computer networks, which are based on the protocol that I've mentioned, the transmission, transport control, communi communication, protocol, which is the TCP, these stimulate substantial increase of workload during utilization of such networks and workload of network grows substantially. I think you can bear witness with me. 
The first computer that I used at that time, I used a, a disk. That was just about 525K to put a system to life, to use. But today, <laughs> what a development. What at the level, at the rate that we are going, and I'm standing there to tell you that we are yet to see things. In 20, by 2025, miracle things will be happening beyond what we are think to happen. Because the storage facility will be something else, and our ability to communicate will be something else. But one important thing that will be a case for us is to watch out how secure are we really in this driving and demanding world. Now, what are the research are saying about this? The researcher have gone on, in, including me, have also looked onto cases that first, we need to look on the efficiency of data exchange within the network. Network is just simply when we connect one or two or three computers or systems together, be it autonomous, be it remotely, able to communicate to themselves. Formerly, it was meant to be, I know you, you know me, we are friends, we can't make that communication. But nowadays, it has reached beyond that. <laughs> we know what happened in the Facebook, and just very really like Vice Chancellor have just said, issues are coming up. In that case, security really being a big case for us. So, in that case, since the data information are coming, becoming more higher, then the congestion, flow controls, all these are becoming challenges to us. And those things are part of the work I've worked on and I've done about since I've started looking into the efficiency of data exchange in the communication network. But my interest was to see that even by trying to perfect, improve the performance of data, within the communication network, but without any addition of our head on the network infrastructure. I think for the network engineers who are here, we know the level of cost that infrastructure can be onto us. The ongoing research, problems related to improving effectiveness of computer network and managing the data transmission have been looked by many researchers and published, particularly my school I've looked to and here in Covenant University, thank God for the Kukrit, where we have our research center, things are happening there. And then currently, we are looking at many, many issues to see ways of solving some things. Because as the world population and awareness increase, development in technology and its attendant challenges keep increasing. So we keep researching. And that is where the research are based in the university, and then we take it out, solving the societal problem. What are the way forward now? In modern comput computing network application environment, there is no alternative to keep researching on ways and means of managing big data securely in our evolving smart world. The world is just evolving. More research should be directed at improving data exchange efficiency and network throughput towards maximizing bandwidth usage as well as in minimizing data loss. Let's just see for our collective information, big data is a massive volume of both structured and unstructured data that is so large, difficult to process, using traditional database and software techniques. What now is the essence of network efficiency? In recent time, the technical innovation have enabled us to collect exponentially growing amount of data through the use of sensors, smart devices that you can see on the board there, the iPod, what have you, the tablets, even the earphones and other sources. Efficient management of these data become imperative. Because, for example, NASA will need a swift time in sending and receiving data from a unmanned vehicle 
Why our military, for example, Nigeria Air Force, name and a drone called Amebo, we also need use it, them to carry weapons to fight the terrorism. The industry of communication are not left behind. I robotic system in the industry are the way to go now. At the airport, when I travel during the summer on my way back, I did check in in my house. When I got to the airport at Borosport, uh, I check in the load with no attendance and everything goes. That is data working. No attention, nobody, the thing just went on its own. And I got to Lagos, I collect my load with everything in town with no problem. That is the way the technology is going. And we need to manage all these efficiently. Because effectiveness of those management of those computers become crucial for accuracy, timing, speed, and security purposes. Now, typically, there are some challenges that are very, very known to computer network or computer problems that we can think of. And some of those challenges are one thing is packet loss. When we talk of packet loss, it means that when packets sent from one end to other end did not get to the other end, whereas missing packet may need to be retransmitted. The availability of the bandwidth, access the bandwidth availability. You can buy the bandwidth, but how available is this bandwidth you can buy? Because bandwidth is caused by serialization delay because of the gadgets or the devices that information needs to pass through before getting to you. It's not just that you send it pass through, getting to Lagos from Otahir. God knows how many devices that the information needs to pass through before getting to you, to Lagos. Another thing, very important thing, is latency. In our own context of computer engineering, when we talk of latency, some people terms it to be as a delay. Some people we terms it to be as a distance. But the latency can be accumulated for people when crowd the contention for a particular information, and then it becomes as if the information that is really here is just about some miles away from us. What are the, now the enabling drives for this? The enabling propellants in the 21st century is as it concerns data exchange and transmission are entrepreneurial. If you look on this slide there, there's a single light that shown everybody comes in there because internet has democratized business creation, enabling new socially inclusive forms of entrepreneurship that fall back to more data usage in communication. And that was looked into by the World Forum Economy, World Economy Forum 2012 and presently 2018 as well too. Transformation. Formerly, I talk of email. The email was just the basic services that we were doing, but now form the backbone of service from banking. Banking industry, slotting, entertainment comes in, medicine comes in, and then that what you could see, the kind of transformation that I showed like the laugh at this, the stages of growth in transformation of a butterfly. Now we move on also, and now transformation comes into the industry, industrial internet. Wow. A transformative form in which the physical world of machine facilities, fleets, and network can be more deeply matched with connectivity, big data, and analytics of the digital world. It is estimated that the innovation of the industrial internet could find direct application in sector accounting for more than 32.3 trillion in economic activity. That tells you that the industry is not left behind. Now we now look onto how these activities has come into to be a, We look on the world internet usage and population, why these problems start coming up. We notice that as the population grow, as Avela said, so also the demand for the information services also comes in. And the, what it simply means that as the workload increases too, you need things to beat up those workload. And that's what we can see in the slide number nine, where we see the population growth and then the growth from 2000 to 2018 in respect to internet users. 
as of 30th June 2018, we have in the internet users in Africa, the number increased rapidly. And that showed the penetration about 36.1%. Now, let's try to refuse analysis of the efficient data exchange. In one of the slides that you are going to see now, you can see the efficiency we are looking at is even at the network itself, the NOCs now are finding it difficult because if you see the first diagram there, there's so much, no more ports left to be plugged anything into. And then when you now loop the port to another, another switch or a router, Already, you're already giving this a kind of a bottleneck. It's already starting from there. Then, another thing again, we are using a Wi Fi of wireless fidelity of about 300 megabits per second, trying to pass through a 100, a 1 megabit per second tunnel. How narrow that tunnel is, as you can see. And then, another thing again, is some of the contention that you find some people struggling to pass those information through. That is where the bottleneck lies. And what do we refer to as bottleneck? Bottleneck is a discrete condition in which data flow is limited by computer or network resources against the backdrop that the flow of data is controlled according to the bandwidth of various system resources seen in the network. As we go further, we will be seeing more of the things that we'll see how it goes. Now let's just bring our memory Lean back to what happened in the 1970s. At that time, when we started it, uh, I, I, you know, the beginner said I used a, 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 a floppy drive to boot a system up. That was the kind of uh, system that I used at that time uh, when we were, the, 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 the transformation was just coming up. At that time, we called it when high speed computer network first become economic and widespread, the period was declared a decade of computer networks. And in the later 70s, researchers noted that the complexity of the issues encountered in building network is dazzling. In Russian, we say Galava Krutit. That means something like your head is turning one kind. <laughs> that was what they were saying at, at that time. Then the 80 were characterized by relatively quiet evolutionary development of network technologies. And this period, development of various methods for assessing the quality and optimization computing system and network was further carried out. When I came home to serve in 1996, I came with a Pentium DX4 at that time. I know, uh, 4A6 DX4. At that time, that system was used as a server. By the time I was returning back in 1998, Pentium was already been established because the processing of information becomes something more than, more than what we can think of. Today, we are witnessing some issues of i3, i7, i5, i7, and even i9 is already in production. With more interest looking into cache, expanding the cache as well, as we're looking into storage facility. But now, the issue of security, earlier this year was talk of the Spectra meltdown. For some of you who might have read it, that now the, the bad boys, as we call them, the hackers, are now going indirect into the the CPU itself to deal with, with us. So what do we need to do? We need to sit tight and then do a lot of things in that respect. Now, as we go further in the 90s now, the explosion of growth of internet infrastructure based on the TCP IP protocol, large scale network infrastructure began to massively form on the mass scale and which are now virtually merged into one complex supernet that connect hundreds of millions of computers. That's where you are now having the worldwide www, and you get your thing done. Now let's look on how data and how big is the data. In 1998, the University Corporation for Advanced Internet Development Initiative was created in the United States and began to operate a high-speed computer network called Internet 2. This was 37 universities were the first that were connected together. They were, these were carried out to achieve various activities within the computer network, which later became challenges to network management as service keep growing. That was just to solve some of those services. And let's just have a look at slide number 12. 
where we have just in 60 minutes, 60, sorry, 60 seconds, what happened? And then I will be looking at it as in a year. Just in a 60 uh, seconds, for Facebook, we have 973,000 logins just in a second. 60 seconds, that's a minute. Then then I'll look on the more interesting part of it, which is the WhatsApp that most of us are, are, are familiar with. We have it giving us a very large number there, which I cannot locate it here, but I will tell you what it is in a, in a month. In a month, for WhatsApp messages sent, we have 1.6 trillion in a month. And then for email sent, we have 8.1 trillion mails sent in a month. I think if you equate that data, that number, into something, you can understand the reason why we are listening to this lecture. And then we're trying to find what are the ways to solve this, the, the narrow, as Russian call, Uski Miesta, the narrow way. In fact, on an annual basis, the data become even more ridiculous, with sometimes close to 100 trillion bytes, terabytes of emails sent. No wonder it is, can never be possible for us all to have, get to what we call a zero inbox, when the, there was nothing that nothing happened. Now, what are the role of the university in these prevailing and then these uprising things? We have that what practice shows that university network in the foreseeable future will be the main testing ground for the development and improvement of the World Wide Web as well as we can see today. Nigeria University through NUC as well too have the Nigerian uh, Research and Education Network we will call NGREG. I remember in the period when I was doing my PhD, that was when the European Union started to connect themselves, run by data group, which I happened to have a taste of how that thing goes there through connecting through optic fiber cable at that time. With such network scale, efficient management of resources seems almost impossible without proper research, including those based on simulation modeling. I think for us, because of the large of this data, and these data are dynamic in nature, to be able to get it done properly, we now need, we need to use simulation method in some in going about it. Let's just look on some of the preliminary analysis before we go further. It is necessary, preliminarily, analysis of the network, we must first determine the analysis objectives, the scope of analytics analysis, and the level of workload of the network under investigation, which you can see from the slide 14 on the board. Now, what is the purpose now of this now? The Chancellor, sir. The purpose of this inaugural lecture is to let people know my research result on how to achieve efficient big data exchange in computer network based on the protocol stack by increasing the efficiency of transmission within them and also the impact of big data on our social economic activities in the, this emerging smart world. The most impactful network performance, as we can see, is at first. The network performance, we look on the type of communication protocol used in their, and their parameters. We are looking on the network performance now, what you can check, check. The physical topology, the performance of communications equipment, the configuration of the system, of the software and the hardware for the last mile, the logical topology of the link, communication mode. And what is the, are the attributes of packet loss now? The effect of packet loss on a transmission control protocol has been widely analyzed by a well-known author, Martins. In, since 1996, I've been following him up, up to today, 2018, and even in the um, uh, request for comment aspect, this is work is being uh, notified, uh, noted there. So, he has worked that stated there that, that the network plus packet loss plus high latency 
is a, a performance for TCP application. If we look on that slide on the board, we notice one thing that the, when packet lost on a network from the sender to a receiver, it created problems. And then, consequently, if we look on the latency, as I've ever told you that the latency may look as a delay, that for a five mega, uh, milliseconds transmission, you notice that in the recent, if your network is bad and the packet loss is less than equal to 5% of it, if you look on the slide very well, you can see, say, go ahead in the network. It's okay. But anything greater than that, you get into no possible nothing happen. Even when, if you pump the whole bandwidth in this world into it, nothing good will come out of it. And then we have some researchers, uh, Shekha, a network look onto it that packet load, latency, and distance degraded application performance. Now I've been talking of the TCP, IP, what is it all about? Let's just, just look, what is this TCP that I've been mentioning about, or the protocols? I've been talking protocol, and even when we started the work, uh, this uh, inaugural lecture, we said, Establish protocols. A set of protocols must be constructed carefully to ensure that the resulting communication system is, is both complete and efficient. Protocols are designed in complete cooperative set called suits of families. It is just the rules that guide your information that you are sending from a source to a destination. And that's why we have the OSI, which is Open System Interoperability. Or we have the, when we talk of the data communication, we talk of the TCP IP, which is Transmission Control Protocol over Internet Protocol. We have information running from the application layer to the physical layer and back from the physical layer to the application layer. Along the line, a lot of things happen inside there, which we will not be able to look into this lecture. Now let's look on the, to the networks now. A network connect one computer to other computer and peripheral devices, enabling one to share data and resources with co-workers. And why the network come into existence? Well, just because we are not able to have enough money. The money, the, our, the, our needs is unlimited, and we cannot all get all what we want, so that way we can share resources. It's just where it's sharing, because the mechanism here is just the sharing. With that, you can share resources, and then that way we even have the wider area network and people trying to even work on the optimization of the wider area network. And even now, software have been developed, say the software divine wine wide area network, just to be able to solve and manage the, the problem within the network as it goes. Let's now look on some of my past research. What have I been able to do? Chancellor, sir? My past research was motivated by the rapid development in communication and information technology and the ever-growing network user demands that make network traffic inefficient, a salient problem in today's internet and mobile connectivity. The focus of my research was to improve the efficiency of data exchange in modern computer networks as applicable to business and thus improve computing network environment based on the protocols that guide this communication. And the goal of this, my research, was developing and design a simulation model for analyzing computer network, which was well done, to be able to care for the intranet, which was the local, and then the extranet, which is the corporate network, as related to the public domain of network management. This process of the research and approach were adopted in many network environments that encourage data mining, big data, IoT, that's Internet of Things, industrial Internet of Things, and a, as related to the need of network connectivity. What are the affecting what are the factors that affect data exchange? The researcher, before I started mine, I look on the hardware and they look on the network topology and then we know hardware, network topology, and the mode of data exchange give the productivity, 
which is the throughput that we are looking at. So I now look on the mode of data exchange. Now let me see if I can be able to shape the mode of data exchange, sending information up and down, maybe I will be able to achieve a good productivity. What did I key in to do? I was trying to find such parameter of data stream, I mean, a kind of frequency at which the real bandwidth capacity of the network is maximized. While when, if I maximize the, the bandwidth of the network that I'm looking at, I will, at the other end, minimize the packet lost. And we know this packet loss that in that protocol that I've told, uh, show you, we have that initial of that layer, when information enters there, we have to tag those information, tag the information, the other layer tag the information. Those tagging information also consume some bandwidth to run the information down to where and then take it up at the case maybe so that it can be able to identify where the information might have find is, uh, got lost or it's not uh, where it, it, it got stuck. So as a result of that now, the problem lies in finding the file size and data processing frequency that the loss rate will be minimal. As you can see on the slide number seven, the impact, that you can see my model that I've developed and used, and uh, very soon there's going to be an app coming out for this model that has been developed because the TCP I'm talking about here is being embedded inside that model, and then soon the app comes out. We, I was expecting the app to be out this today's lecture, but uh, unfortunately, we just have some uh, little things to, to improve on it. So if you look on my research finding now, what I found out in my research was that because life, our want, is unlimited, Life is not just as fine as we can all seem to be. We keep on strive to make it better. At the zone A, I have zone A, B, C, D. I look on those zones that at the beginning, when the less users are on the network, everything was good, okay. You can notice that one early morning it is around 11 o'clock, and when it's from uh, 12 down to around 3, you start seeing some uh, degradation on the network. But whatever be the case, performance of the network is guaranteed to give you about 70% of the network will be good. But 30% of this network can be used to care for the ineventuality of things that happen within the network itself. It is a standard and have been proved, <coughs> which I also key in and also myself found out uh, that it is true. And you notice I put the coefficient of packet loss at that side. It's what I'm trying to look at to make it minimal, I was able to achieve that research, and then that's why I'm making it known to the public today. The impact of efficient data exchange in network performance, in my work with my supervisor, we were able to analyze the result obtained. We have a three-dimensional 3D shows of the result obtained at that time, which shows the first graph shows a change in time, the time changes, and the second graph shows a constant time. What are we trying to see, find there, what to check? If the number increase of users, file sizes, the, the effect on the performance of the network, and we're able to see that at a certain stage, it starts increasing based on that my finding that I've shown early on, and then that's what we are able to, to concretize our findings which was shown. The general research outcome. The main research... So the, yeah. the research in the process, I was able to derive a method that will be able to guide in the process of what we are doing. That means the force for you to obtain efficiency of the network first you first have to formulate the required bandwidth for the network. The next thing, you determine the minimum rational file size. When we talk of rational file size, we talk of the optimizing file size that will be used in your network, maximize it as well. Then also the frequency, as I've said, the data stream also have to be looked into both minimum and, min and maximum, which I have. 
and then uh, we have already resolved solution of that right here with me and you can see in 2012 was uh, defined and then we were able to see the best result on, on that aspect. General research, a research outcome. The main scientific results referred and found useful in business organizations as follows. A proposed multi-level ways of simulation, simulating and analyzing the efficient function of computer exam was achieved. A formulated solution using correlation of the real and the desired bandwidth capacity. And then in the process, we were able to have 10 to 15 percent efficiency achievable of the network. Now research results now. Perfection of mode of data exchange to improve network performance without additional overhead on the network was published in 2003 and 2005 respectively. And the research result of my work is used in the bank, in the IT companies, law firms, schools, and individually. For those who know me, when it comes to network efficiency and performance, I think I'm, I'm not left behind in this school and then outside the school as well, too. Now, let's just relax a bit and see now the big data security, a little video of what the second part of this lecture, the big data security as it goes now. Studio, please. We have the big data, the transformation of the data. Formerly, data was in terms of the digital format, and, and it was in an, an analog format, and then start with started the digger, a digital. In 1986, it was 1%. In 1993, the digital was 3%. In, in 2000, 25%. And 2007, it became 94 percent, a percent, and then with a size of 280 exabytes. What are the opportunities you can see from there? And today's is on different form. What are the opportunity of the big data? It is useful for decision making and effort to improve the financial position of any organization. But in the competitive world, there is a lot of new technology to master, and this is changing fast. The goal of a big data management is to ensure a high level of data quality and accessibility for business intelligence, intelligence and a big data analytic application. Data stores are constantly growing, so, that's, so what seems like a, a lot of data right now may seem like a perfectly normal amount in a year to, or two. In addition, every organization is different, so the amount of data that seems ch challenging for a small retail store may not seem like a lot to a large financial service company. The evolution of data to live critical. Big data, not only the big data, it is data that is big. I repeat again, big data, not only the big data, it is the data that is big. This follows as the role of data changing our world. I think you can see in 1980 how the data was, data site almost exclusively in data center, data and computers centralized, and then in 1980 to 2000, data and compute are distributed, and then data center expand their role in management data. And 2000 to today, we are having cloud, Abby? managing activities for us as we go along. We also have worldwide data to reach, looking at worldwide data we reach about 163 zettabytes by the 2025. And what are we have to look onto that? That the evolution of data from business background to life critical Embedded systems are coming in and the IOTs, Internet of Things, are just all over. 
Some of us are having about ten, uh, three equipment, and all of them are locked, uh, connected into the internet. It's also an issue. Mobile and real-time data are needed. For example, if you are doing a telemedicine and you are doing operation in, 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 in Ghana, and we have the specialists here in Nigeria, we need that, that activity to keep on going, and it carries not a little data, a bigger data. And most importantly, security as a crucial foundation. I think the VC mentioned a little of those security, we will also be looking on some of them as it goes. And one other very important thing is cognitive artificial intelligence, AI system that changes the landscape. I'm happy to tell you that three of my postgraduate students are intensively using this artificial intelligence, be it a, a, a machine learning in trying to solve some of the challenges, problems like wireless sensor network and some other things to do with part of what we are listening today, we show that we are not left behind in this university. Thank you. Now, we are efficient data exchange for big data security. The era of big data is producing unprecedented amount of data, including sensitive information like, with understanding of improving efficiency data exchange, securely all side. And what are the goals of data security? We have a confidentiality, integrity, availability. In all that, those are the fundamental goal of security. If we have all those ones available, we will have things go on better for us. That means confidentiality prevents unauthorized use of disclosure of information, integrity, safeguard the accuracy and competence of information, Complete, completeness of information and availability authorize users have reliable and timely access to inform, information. Now, the, formally we do hear of the three Vs, but today now we are in the five V big data. You have big data if, you are, if your data store have the following characteristics, the velocity, the value, the variety, The veracity, if you have all those characteristics, then your data is big, it is. Then, the big data challenge is now. We have the data growth, give us a challenge. Generating insight timely, achieving business goal and extract insight from it. Recruiting and retaining big talent, big data talent, people that are knowledgeable about data, difficult to have them. Integrating desperate data resources, validating data, securing big data, organizing resistance. And then we can just pick from there the validation of the data. If the session is broken, the hackers can easily have access to that information. And then that's what you have. And again, securing big data, when you have security misconfiguration, as well can create more issues. We find out that after the issue of the Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, the European Union brings out that user data restriction comes into general data protection regulatory. And that was in 2018, just to avoid people just using your data anyhow, as the case may be. In overcoming big data challenges and protecting their crown jewelries, information from outside hackers and international misuse by insider or contractors, organizations are embracing a range of methods in the cloud and on premises from across the data life cycle, including encryption, masking, and monitoring. In conclusion, the method of improving efficiency data exchange in computer network was offered by perfection on mode of data exchange within them. These allow an increment to the network performance without additional overheads on infrastructure of the network. And that was able to achieve by giving a 10 to 15 percent increment. Again, the background of earlier recommended measures of improving efficiency of data exchange in computer network in the emerging smart world, big data are very attractive target for hackers because they contain valuable and sensitive information. This can range from financial or intellectual property to corporate data and personal user data. Chancellor, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, 
distinguished guests, data exchange, big data, and network security are unavoidably interwoven in efficient and effective management of computer networks. Big data is a tool that definitely worth looking into and has the ability of changing our world completely that shows no sign of being a passing fate to disappear anytime in the near future. These concerns stand at the direction in research for a new approach to topical challenges in data mining, network utilization, storage, and security of the dynamic information and communication industry. Acknowledgement. I'm indeed grateful to Almighty God for the gift of life in Christ Jesus that have enabled me to attain the peak of my academic pursuit and to be alive to deliver this lecture. I appreciate the Chancellor and Chair Board of the Regent of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyeripo, the visionary, the prophet of our time, for this platform upon which this lecture is delivered. Also permit me to appreciate my Vice Chancellor, Professor A.A. Atairo, who we have to travel together to Soviet Union, we didn't know ourselves, but God knows that we have to meet to part and part to meet. We met here in Covenant University. I'm grateful we have been working friendly and cordially in our relationship. My appreciation goes to the third substantial, the, uh, uh, second substantial Vice Chancellor, Professor Isaac Obaya, and third substantial Vice Chancellor, Professor C.K. Ayo, who are former staff under my head of department. Dean College of Engineering, and as well I was appointed uh, professor during this time. My gratitude goes to all the professors at uh, the Dean of College of Engineering, the fourth and the third substantial deans of College of Engineering, and the present dean, the Professor Omoli. I thank you all for your support. I thank all the, pro all the professors of College of Engineering. I appreciate you all. I thank you for the cordial relationship we've been having. My appreciation goes to all Sayusnik members, Association of uh, Graduates from Soviet Union, Yavas Privates to agree to all. My greetings, the greeting goes to the colleagues that I work in University of Lagos when I just, my first sojourn back home started. I greet you all. I have Professor Sadiq here, my uncle. He has been the one that has been advising me and guiding me in all things. I appreciate, appreciate you and with your family. I would love to appreciate my supervisor, Alexander Pri Anna Priyenko, my research supervisor, now a deputy minister of education in numbers, Donetsk, for his patient guides, patient guidance, enthusiastic encouragement, and useful critiques of my research work. I thank all the lecturers that I've worked with in Donetsk Technical University. I thank all colleagues like uh, Akin, Dr. Charles, Godfrey, and many others who have been able to read through this work, and Professor Woshokwetu for looking through my, this draft of my inaugural lecture, as well as the Vice -Chancellor, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akan William. They help me look through the work, and then I really appreciate And some of my colleagues, uh, students, my postgraduate students as well, who have also helped me in doing the presentation preparation. Thank you all. I would also like to, thank, extend, uh, like to extend my thanks to my brothers, sisters, niece, and nephews, some who are really present here. I thank you all. I also have express my thanks to my cousin, who is their reference, Samuel Uakwan and his wife, who are presently come from Uyo down here. I'm very, very grateful. My sister, Alice Okafo, that also come here to grace this occasion. I'm very, very grateful. My sister, Janet, and my son as well, too. Something, I'm grateful that you are here. I can as well see Professor Ezezebo from Unilag that is here. I'm grateful. I have to thank my mom, Mrs. Mojitala Sadiku, who have put me through this life 
when I lost my mom in 1982. Mommy, I ever call you, I'm loyal to you, I respect you, I love you from the depth of my heart. You are a darling to me. I love you, mommy. She take care of me and show me the way of life. And I thank God for giving me the patience to listen to her. I remember when I do go to primary school to go and sit down and read, and she will bring food to come and give me. Mommy, I'm grateful. I wish to thank the children of mommy who took me as their senior brother far and near. For those who have been seeing me, I have them in different. They are lovely mommy. I'm grateful to be part of that family. God will keep you for me and keep you for us to, to, to benefit the reason why I'm not so with you. I love you, mommy. I wish to thank my parents for their support and encouragement when they were alive. My regard to goes to my late mother-in-law. She was such a woman that I love. I don't know if it's common in Nigeria here that your mother-in-law can wash your pants. I don't think there is any in Nigeria here. She did that to me. She was a mother to me. I have mother, I have three mother. I'm blessed to have three mother. I thank the sister, my mother and my sister-in-law Tatiana as well. Finally, I appreciate my immediate family for their love, care and understanding. My special thanks to my lovely daughter Lucy. She couldn't be here today because there's a war over there, and my wife as well too. Your love and quiet spirit is well appreciated. Meeting and marrying my wife, darling Lucy Olka, Lenny Dove now, a woman of great faith and knowledge was the best love that I ever experienced. By the mercy and favor of God, I thank you for providing a conducive environment for me to flourish both academically and spiritually. Our 28 years together has been a great one I love you. I thank everybody that I could not mention names for taking the time to be here with me. And I thank those that have been related with me cordially. Thank you all for your present and kind attention. As Russian we say, Pasiva. Let's rise as we give the lecturer a round of applause. We can do better. Let's give it to him again. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you very much. Let's have a seat. You will agree with me that this lecture is a unique one. It made us to see the back end of all devices we have in our hands. Professor John. Thank you for this great one. God bless you. Now, to take us further, I want to invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor AAA Attire, for the Chancellor's closing remarks. Let's rise on our feet as we receive him, please. The Chancellor of Covenant University in absentia, Dr. David Oyedepo. Please, you may be seated. It is not often that you get the privilege to stand in the shoes of a giant. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm in the shoes of the Chancellor of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo. But by privilege of grace, 
I have known him since the year 2000 when I answered the altar call to him, to Jesus through him. And if there's anything I've seen in the life of our Chancellor, it is the passion for our continent, Africa. It breathes it, it thinks it, it sleeps it. In its waking hours, it dreams about this continent. That is why the topic of today and the lecture of today becomes very, very important because it speaks to the future of this great continent. The African Development Bank recently did a survey. They came out with some findings and consequent on those findings, one of the things they decided to do was to create 130 centers of high city excellence in Africa. For what purpose? To create 9 million jobs, train 234,000 future African coders that we may arrest the problem of unemployment on this continent by the year 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, it gladdens my heart to report to you that Covenant University is one of four in Nigeria. So the question is this. African Development Bank is thinking about our problems. World Bank is thinking about our problems. By Sunday of this week, two, three days to come, a group of experts from the World Bank will come to do a site survey of Covenant University in the second stage of our application for an African Center of Excellence. You can clap for that. We're talking about a grant that will bring millions of dollars to Covenant University for research. But the point is this. Why is it the external people that are thinking about our internal problems for us? Nigeria is a country of over 190 million people. Do we have the data about the demography of this nation? If we do not have the data about the demography of this nation, how then can we plan in an informed manner about the future of this nation? If we cannot plan about the future of this nation, are we not doomed to repeat the follies of the past? These are very mind-boggling questions. And that is why the lecture of today by our very erudite scholar, Professor Undue Sujan, becomes something we have to take with all the seriousness it deserves. How do we use big data? How do we use the high cities to affect the future of our great continent? How do we move away from the status quo of doing things the way they were done, expecting to see a different result? A sage once said, it's only a fool that does, does things the way it was done and expects a different outcome. How do we become so disruptive in our mindset and in our thinking that we can now accommodate fresh ideas that we were never thought of before, because until we are able to do that, I make bold to say that the future is bleak. How do we break away from the shackles of tradition? To the kings and queens here present, you are blessed to be in an institution, a citadel, that is totally open to departure from the norms, which is why we have our core values. But 
how seriously are you imbibing the things that we are dishing out to you in Covenant University? I was privileged to be at an event this past week where two graduates of Covenant University were turned in not. It was humbling because I saw students I taught from year one to year five in communication engineering leading the band. They are now singing. So I was thinking to myself, why did you waste that time? Year one to year five, study communication engineering just to become an artist. But something dawned on my soul, listening to them doing it perfectly. That it is an indication that if you let this institution pass through you, and not just you, through this institution, whatsoever, I repeat, whatsoever you lay your hands to perform will prosper. But you must imbibe the things you are selling in this institution. Because as I say over and again, the future of our great continent depends on you. I was watching the Senate yesterday and I was aghast at the quality of people we have representing us as a nation. When fighting for a seat will take them like 15, 20 minutes to resolve in a country like Nigeria with our burning issues. Who sits where? That was the bone of contention in the Nigerian Senate. Not how do we address the issue of access. Over a million high school students pass out every year with nowhere to go to. Not how do we attack the unemployment problem. Not how do we move away from thinking about how the lives of cows are becoming more important than the lives of humans. That is why my address to you today is to the king and kings of Hebron. The future depends on you. You have to do better than those that are doing it now. And for our guests, thank you for gracing this occasion. It will pain I know the Chancellor, if we depart from here today and feel satisfied that we have had another academic event. This event should be such that we make us go back, reflect, and speak in our own souls what am I to do as an individual to make sure that the future of this country becomes better. How should it be that training people outside this country becomes something very, very important? Not the way we were trained, unfortunately, because I'm sure Professor Ondue saw us his own stories. How that you can go with the federal government scholarship outside the shores of the nation and almost be as if you are not on the federal government scholarship. Thank God for the Russian government. So we have issues to address. This should not end just as an academic exercise. This should be a point of sober reflection to see how do we take this further into the polity, how do we start imbibing that fifth core value of Covenant University of us, which is responsibility. How do you hold yourself responsible for what should happen in your vicinity? Ladies and gentlemen, if at the end of this day, after the cocktail and everything we're going to have, we are able to go home and say, yes, I've taken something, I've taken a resolution. Nigeria must be better because Nigeria was blessed to have me as a citizen of Nigeria. Then I can say that I know the mind of our father, the Chancellor of Covenant University, will be pleased. 
It is on this note I say thank you for coming and remain blessed. Another round of, of applause for, to our amiable Vice Chancellor. You may be seated, please. Yes, to take, uh, to move for the vote of thanks, I want to invite Dr. Joke Badijo. The Chancellor, sir, permit me to stand on the already established protocol. On this occasion of the 17th inaugural lecture delivered today by Engineer Professor Samuel Ndueso John, I want to deeply appreciate the Almighty God, the God of Hebron, where kings and queens are made for the gift of life, wisdom, and strength, with which we can do all of which we have been able to do here today. To him alone behold the glory. I want to appreciate at this point the chairman and cha uh, everyone, award winning vice chancellor, Professor Hei Yatayo, and the entire university management for facilitating the delivery of this rich knowledge product, science kit. Thanks for your presence to the members of the Council for the Re Regulation of Engineering in Nigerian Korean, Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSC, here today. Thank you for your profession, prof professional support. To all the faculty staff of University of Lagos seated here today that came to support uh, the lecturer, thank you for gracing this occasion. To the members of press here present, thank you for joining us in showcasing the good work of God in our university. And to every friend of the university and well wisher here today, thank you for coming and thank you for your continuous support. I would also like to appreciate the esteemed professors, the members of Senate, the faculty, and staff of the best university in Nigeria and in West Africa at large, Covenant University. Thank you for your time, your support, and valuable contributions to the success of this 17th inaugural lecture. Now to the kings and queens in Hebron, Thank you for attending this lecture. You have graciously added color to the event of today. Thank you for coming. I must also say congratulations to the faculty, staff, and students of the Department of Electrical and Information Engineering, the celebrating department of today. It's indeed our honor. And to God alone be all the glory. To so every invited guest here today, as you go from here, we pray that the grace of God, the peace of God, the serenity, and mercy will go with you as you journey back to your various destinations in Jesus' name. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Thank you very much. We want to acknowledge the presence of uh, guests. We want to recognize the family of the lecturer of today and Reverend Samuel Ackman. God bless you. Oh, he came with his wife. Hannah Appan also, you're welcome. We have Mr. Joseph Appan. You're in the house. God bless you, you're welcome. We have Mrs. Aladi Sadiq. God bless you, you're welcome. We have Mrs. Mujisola Sadiq. That's our lecturer's mother, you're welcome. Yes, our lecturer also have uh, academic friends from other universities. We want to recognize from Unilag Professor Izzy Zobo David. God bless you, sir. You're welcome. From Lautek Ogumosha, we have Professor John Olajide. You're welcome. Um, by the special grace of God, we're be going to be recognizing more people at the cocktail after this uh, event. And the cocktail will take place at the CL Conference Hall. The, the venue is directly opposite us here. And the members of Senate and all our guests are invited. Now, to deliver a good will message this evening, we want to receive Professor Obanish Shola Sadiq for this good message. Um, the 
Chancellor Dr. David Oyedapo, the Vice Chancellor Professor Atayero. I'm particularly glad that uh, you are also a product of the former Soviet Union, of which uh, I'm also a proud product. <laughs> Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I want to appreciate everyone here on behalf of the family of uh, Professor Sam John. Um, when he arrived in Donetsk in uh, 1986, I was on my PhD program then in Kyiv. I was in Kyiv. And uh, through our mommy, I was informed that uh, another member of the family has arrived, the Soviet Union. And then um, we communicated. Then there was no internet, there was no phone. So we had to communicate through the uh, telephone tube. So we, I got contact with him. And uh, from then on, it has been um, a wonderful moment. I appreciate today's lecture. And um, on behalf of the family, we want to appreciate the uh, management of uh, Covenant University for the excellent environment provided for Sam John for his academic and intellectual development. Um, uh, when he arrived from um, Donetsk in uh, 1996, thereabout, I was already in the University of Lagos. I was already, and uh, I got him employment. Then our computer engineering in the University of Lagos is as a unit of uh, the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering was just coming up. So I got him employed in the University of Lagos. He was given letter of appointment. But uh, the university could not provide him with accommodation. And he arrived with his wife. <laughs> so based on that, he had to come to Covenant University. And then uh, since then, he has been here and uh, he has risen through the ranks to become a professor. And then um, to discharge his academic debt today, we really appreciate God for that. I want to thank everyone <clears throat> that came to honor him on this inaugural lecture. I want to appreciate the uh, deans and the, all his academic uh, colleagues in the department, in the faculty, in the college of engineering, and um, the management in general of this uh, great university. May the Lord continue to bless Covenant University in Jesus' name. I uh, want to appreciate everyone here, his students, his research students that are also here. We want to appreciate you all for honoring him in this uh, inaugural lecture. May God take you back to your respective destination in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everybody. Come on, let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Now, to take us further in this 17th inaugural lecture, is coming to a close now. I want to call on the Covenant University Chaplain, Pastor Kayode Muffins, for the closing prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this 17th inaugural lecture. You began with us, and here at this end today, we thank you. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that as everyone departs from this place, your presence will not depart from us. Everyone individual that came from far and near, your presence will be with them as they go back to their various locations. No evil will be accounted in this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, to everyone present and most importantly to your son, 
who made the presentation today, let your wisdom and grace never cease from his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of the statements that have been made here in steering us up concerning the concerns in our nation, in Africa, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will yet continually raise a mighty army that will bring forth light into every dark areas of our continent, of our nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, the purpose in which you have brought this institution to bear, you will keep accomplishing it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for today, for your good end on every side, for the joy and the rejoicing in the heart of everyone, for the good memories that you have given to everyone for accomplishing today. To you be all the glory, honor, and adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Let's put our hands together for the chaplain. Now, before we take the CU anthem, I want to say that the procession after the anthem will be in reverse order. Now, the CU anthem, Covenant University Band. session in reverse order. 